It's interesting and when I do my talks and talk with audiences, I ask the audience, what's the number one fear of adults in America? Unquestionably, every time, as it comes out in surveys and as it comes out in audiences, the number one fear of adults in America is public speaking. So then I ask, what is it we're asking kids to do in school? We're asking them, while they're not quite up to speed, when they're still uncomfortable and clumsy with this reading process, to stand up in front of the class, or even sit in front of the class, and read out loud, exhibiting their internal struggle and difficulty with this for all to see and experience. I sometimes think that there's a connection between that, that the, it's the shame that children experience in school for being on the spot with such an uncomfortable and yet unyet mature processing challenge that's caused this phobia, this fear about public speaking downstream. But in addition to those collateral side issues that we think of when we talk about shame, there's something that's even more fundamental and that lies right at the heart of the brain's challenge. It begins with the ambiguity overwhelm that's a consequence of trying to process this code. When the ambiguity is too great, the flow stutters for all the reasons that we've been discussing. When the flow stutters, instead of this transparent f stream of language experience going on in the mind, a self-consciousness comes up. Uh-oh, here I am again. And that self-consciousness precipitates the shame. You could argue that the shame precipitates the self-consciousness. And when the flow stutters, the, the impedance to the ongoing interest triggers the affect of shame. And as the shame triggers, it actually dissipates, it, it bifurcates, it causes what the brain, it causes the brain, instead of just to be working on processing involved in the reading, it's now trying to work on the processing involved with reading while it's also distracted with all of the powerful energies that come with the feeling of shame and with all of the content that comes with shame. Well, I'm no good, I'm not smart, etc. So ambiguity overwhelm causes a stutter in the flow, which leads to a self-consciousness, which triggers a shame. The shame itself is cognitively dissipating. It robs the brain of bandwidth capacity to do the work that it's feeling ashamed about. And this disentrainment causes a dropout in the flow of reading. And it's very frustrating. The frustration tends to bleed into a blame of self. The blame of self changes the threshold trigger for shame, causing, making it easier for shame to happen and triggers more shame. The more that we experience shame, the more that we want to avoid it. We start to develop self-images. We start to develop ways of talking to ourselves like, I'm no good, I'm not smart, I'm just not a good reader. All these various things that you've heard time and time again from people that are struggling, which are ways of characterizing their experience that help minimize their shame. All of this, of course, leads to the avoidance of reading. So we've got shame interfering with the ability to read. Once children have gone so far down the path and haven't taken off, they now feel bad about themselves to various degrees. They're feeling shame unconsciously faster than they're even aware of, just like reading itself is an unconscious automatic construction process. Imagine what's happening when deep in that faster than thought unconscious process, shame is triggering. It's interrupting and stuttering the ability of the process to stay engaged in the tasks. So the more that that happens, the harder and harder and harder it becomes to read. So in that sense, one of the brain's challenges, a significant challenge to the brain, once children have gone so far down the road here and haven't taken off, is the shame, the actual cognitive processing implications of the triggering of shame in the context of this challenge of learning to read.